I'm Rick Johansson and this is Iron Echo Design outside. I'm out for my morning run and I come across a bag full of toys marked free. <laughs> Not creepy at all. I got kids so I look through it and I find these two shark figures. I had a question about how to extract digital assets for uses in vector designs and this is one way to do it. You could take toys like these and create your own vector asset. You can use it in patterns, logos, anything. I'll show you how to do it today using Inkscape with the trace bitmap feature and also everyone's favorite paint bucket. All showered up, just got back to my desk. You don't need a lot of equipment to do this. I'm just gonna do a handheld phone taking pictures. I've got a white backdrop here, just a piece of paper, no fancy lighting. It's a nice sunny day coming in through the windows. And here's the great white shark. I'll put it down. I don't want to see a whole bunch of shadows. This will do really well as an overhead. I'll take an image with my phone. Before I bring in the source image though, I'll crop out the desk area. All you want is the white and the toy because what you're looking for is to get that contrast. We'll use trace bitmap to extract the difference in brightness. Let's try the hammerhead. Same thing there. This one looks okay. I do see some shadow underneath the hammer face. We can take care of that inside of Inkscape. The question is, how do you do it in profile? Because if I hold it, I'll see my finger. And a very easy way to take care of that is find something like a tape dispenser. This is just scotch tape without the label. And you can place that down as a stand and put your shark in there. Obviously, you can see some more shadows and clearly see the tape dispenser itself. But again, those will come out inside of Inkscape using Trace Bitmap. So let's do it then. Here we are back inside of Inkscape. I'm going to take from my desktop. I'm going to drag in that first image that we took of the great white shark. You get a pop-up, import image type embed, DPI from file, rendering none. Okay, and here it is. This is all that we need. You want to go up to path, trace bitmap. Over here, you'll see the sidebar menu. If you've never used trace bitmap for today, stay on the single scan tab. Detection mode, brightness cutoff. The default of the threshold is 0.45, which actually looks pretty good. You can adjust it with the plus minus 0.44, looks like I told myself. For details, I have mine speckles selected, smooth corners, and optimize. All selected, two for speckles, one for smooth corners, 0.20 for optimize. This is your preview box. That looks pretty good. I'll hit apply. And that's it. Now we have a vector asset from the toy we found on the street. I said widen down here. I'll widen it slightly. Let's change the color. I'll go to object, fill and stroke. I'm on the fill tab. We'll go with some type of dark red. If this was a cooking show, I already made a batch right here. And what you can do then is you can slide it onto some type of graphic. And there you go. You've got your vector asset you made in two seconds with trace bitmap. Let's do another one. I want to show you how to get rid of that tape dispenser that was used as a stand. Move this out of the way. I've got the image selected. Go back to trace bitmap. Same thing, detection mode, brightness cut off. It looks like I want a 0.49. I'll move the slider, 0.494. Preview looks good. I'll click apply. And there it is. But we've got some extra nodes here. If I zoom in, you'll see this garbage down here. That is the tape dispenser, but watch how easy it is to get rid of it. Double click. This pulls up the nodes. The new vector object is made up of lots of little nodes. If I click and drag a bounding box around these renegade nodes, I can push delete and they're gone. Here's the cleaned up version. Maybe we change the color to something blue. And let me show you what you can do once you have something in vector format. I'm going to do the live path effect called bend. Go up to path, down here, path effects. The sidebar menu will be empty. Hit the plus. Now you can choose what path effect you want up here at the top, bend. You click on it and nothing happens. So what does it do? Over here, if you click on bend path, this is the edit on canvas button. Hit that and you'll see a bar here. Now you can grab in the middle of the bar and bend the whole thing. Seems to give it a little bit more life than just the stiff toy. But you can also add another node, maybe right here. And that's going to almost act like a fulcrum. And you can move the back portion. See our shark? Move its tail. 
Okay, there's that. And the last thing I want to show you is how to use the paint bucket tool so you can optimize these vector objects so you can use them more easily with live path effects, making patterns, or things that are more intensive instead of Inkscape. I skipped ahead. This is a 0.46 brightness cutoff on the threshold for our hammerhead shark. To illustrate the point, if I double click on it, you can see all of the nodes hitting the selector tool in the information box, there's 15,977 nodes in this object, which is fine. I like the way it came out, but it's gonna be harder to use. Now, savvy Inkscape users might say, just use Path Simplify. And you can do that, go up to Path, Simplify. And this comes out pretty well, actually. In this case, you might wanna go that route. It knocked it down to 412 nodes. But let me just show you Paint Bucket because I also learned a trick recently. Control Z takes it back to the full 15,977 nodes. Paint Bucket is tricky, but there are some good uses. Here's one of them. First, I'm gonna hit this zoom up here, the magnifying glass with the dashes, zoom to fit selection, because the actual outcome of the Paint Bucket use does take into account where you're zoomed at. So for consistency, I like to try to fill up the whole window with whatever I'm doing. Go to Paint Bucket. It's gonna use whatever color we used last. Looks like it was black. So let's set this to just this yellow for now. Now. You can also set it permanently under preferences. I like to do it on the fly like this. Back to paint bucket up here, fill by. Normally it starts at visible colors. We're going to go down to alpha. That's the term that Inkscape uses for the amount of opacity that's present. Threshold 95, grow shrink zero, close gaps none. If I click inside of my hammerhead shark, you can see it creates a new vector object. Let's darken that. And it only has 418 nodes. Here is the trick I learned recently. If you already knew this, let me know in the comments. You can go to Paint Bucket. If I hold Alt and drag it over different parts of my image here, it's going to collect it all at once. I love it. Didn't know that. Did you know that? We're at 752 nodes, which will make it much easier to do this pattern we're going to finish off with. Let's change it to blue. Rotate it to the side. To bring path effects back up, go to Path. Path effects, empty menu again, hit the plus. We wanna look for tiling, here it is at the bottom. And this is one of the new features from Inkscape 1.2. It's pretty easy, pretty fun to play with. The mirroring mode is this first one where they're all going the same direction. Let's get some more rows and columns so it's easier to see the effect. We'll do six rows, six columns. All it's doing is taking that first object, tiling it out, but the second mode is going to change every other row, it's pointing a different direction. I like this one up here in the upper right-hand corner. Makes a very interesting pattern. Can't even tell it's really hammerhead sharks. Let's actually add some more spacing under gap X. We'll do 100. It's set to pixels. Enter. Gap Y, 100. Enter. Let's try one more. I like this one. Bottom row, third from the right. It's very precise. You can add some more variation under scale. We'll do 10% variation and we'll make it random and then rotate 10% random. There you go. Hope you found this helpful. If you have success taking something you found and making something out of it, let me know. If you're coming into issues, ask away in the comments. All right, thanks. See you next time.